There is a thin line between prophecy and prognostication, and we have to be careful to not confuse the two. Prophecy can involve things from the past and present that feed into the future. Prognostication is looking at historical or contemporary things to make a prediction. In 2 Kings 6, Elisha, the man of God, told the king of Israel what the king of Syria was planning against them. And as a result, he could tell him things that he needed to do to prevent the Syrians' intentions. When it comes to prognostication, some people may look at the cycles of the moon and other things to try to determine what's going to happen in the future. There's a midterm election in the United States recently. And before the election, those on the Republican side were saying that there would be a red wave. Others upgraded it to a red tsunami. And then what do you know? I think it was the morning of the election. There was what is called a blood moon. And we're seeing a YouTube channel and this person doesn't profess Christianity, but they're, they're a group of them. But the person mentioned about the blood moon and it being a sign of the red wave, I'm like, oh boy. Now the lunar cycle does have to do with high and low tide and stuff like that, but to start talking about a red wave and then he went to a website talking about the spiritual meaning of a, um, a blood moon, trying to link it to the quote unquote red wave. I stopped watching at that point in time because that was prognostication. And likewise, for those who look at the state of US economy, the state of the border, and other things, and they started making prognostication. That is different from having the word of the Lord. It is important for you to know the difference between those who are prophesying versus those who are making prognostications based on things they can see. Because even though prophecy may include things from the past and present and steer into the future, oftentimes prophets have what could be called beyond line of sight, beyond line of sight, seeing beyond the horizon. Things that when they say, us would be like, no, it's not going to happen, or I can't see that happening. That's the kind of insight the Lord gives to people who are prophetic. So it's not a matter of looking at how things are going. Then there's this thing I've heard in the media a lot of times, and I can't stand it, when I talk about reading the tea leaves. And by reading the tea leaves, which is a form of divination, they're looking at, they're talking about looking at things that are going on now, and things in the past, to try to determine what's going to go on in the future. The Lord can be very unpredictable. Isaiah and David prophesied about the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. The things that they said, hundreds of years in advance, but it came to pass. And it's not to say that prophecy cannot be something that is much um, sooner. In 2 Kings 4, Elisha told a Shunammite woman that by this time next year, you're going to have a son. It happened. Was it um, 1 Samuel 8 and 9? Samuel knew that Saul was going to be king, and he told him, and it happened shortly afterwards. But there was nothing in Saul's life that pointed to him being Israel's first king. And for David, his own family had him still tending the sheep when Samuel had showed up to anoint one of Jesse's sons as king. So do not confuse prophecy with prognostication. And also do not get wrapped up in prognostication as opposed to prophecy. There's also this in, um, in John 4. The Samaritan woman had an encounter with Jesus. 
the Lord told her, or asked her um, to bring her husband. And she said she, shouldn't have, she didn't have any. And the Lord told her, she's right. She's had five husbands, and the man she was with is not her husband. And then she said she discerned that he was a prophet. The same way in 2 Kings 4, the Shunammite woman discerned that Elisha was a man of God. So sometimes it comes down to discernment. There are things that through observation we can discern. Maybe we can even look at people, how they conduct themselves, and start discerning what their gift and calling may be. But even though a person may demonstrate those traits, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what their calling is. And we have to be careful that we don't look at a person's potential and start saying, oh, this person's this or this person's that, because that may not be the case. So not only do we need to look out for prognostication in others, we also need to look out for it in ourselves. Because we not mean, may not mean to get into the business of divination, but it could happen that way. And sometimes doing things in the natural invites certain spiritual things in. And a person could actually get a spirit of divination to attach itself to an individual and may sound like prophecy, prophetic utterance from the Lord. So I close this message with what I think will be two scriptures. In Isaiah 47, start verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. See, there are things we can't see coming unless the Lord reveals it. And mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to put it off, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Hmm. You may have heard people prophesying, talking about the Lord's going to do something suddenly. Suddenly isn't always good. Stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. I pause for a second. There's also this. I don't know if anyone prophesied about there being a red wave. And if they prophesied about it, and they weren't specific towards certain areas, if they prophesied about it, then based on evidence, they were wrong. If they prophesied about a red tsunami, they were wrong. If they drew in the blood moon as being a sign of a red wave on this, elect, or this past election day, they were wrong. But there's a difference between a person who prophesies, whether they use the Lord's name or not, who prophesies as if something's come from the Lord. There's a different standard for accountability versus, for example, someone in the media who are saying things, whether it's because of wishful thinking or because of what they were looking at, historical events, contemporary events, and then making prognostication. The standards are different for them because some, they will even tell you, oh, I didn't say that, or they may start saying something totally different now, as if they weren't on board with a quote-unquote red wave. The standards are different for prognosticators versus we could call prophesiers, those who prophesy or those who um, are prophets. Pick up verse 13. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels, I pause a second. Scripture tells us that there is safety in a multitude of counselors. I'd like to add a caveat of wise counselors. Wise as in those who fear the Lord. Wise as in those who have insight from the Lord. Hmm. After Solomon's death, his son, Rehoboam, took over. The people had an issue. Rehoboam sought advice from the advisors who worked with Solomon. 
they were older. They told him one thing. Then Rehoboam sought advisors from his contemporaries, those who were about his age. They told him another thing about making things worse than Solomon did, contrary to what the wise ones had said. He followed them and he suffered serious consequences as a result. So he had counselors, some were right, some were wrong. There was also 1 Kings 22. Ahab inquired of his prophets, 400 of them. They all told him, go over to Gilead, you be successful. But Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, was with them. And he asked for a man of God. Ahab was reluctant to get Micaiah, a prophet. Micaiah told him something that contradicted, <laughs> contradicted what the other prophets had said. So two sources of information. Only one was right. I said many times, some people may want to debate if the Lord has prophets today. And even without getting into that debate, what I can say is prophets are needed today. The same way there are prophets in the Bible who advise kings, whether they listened or not. The same way in the Bible, like Agabus, prophesying to the Apostle Paul. Prophets are needed today to include, to advise secular leaders. Wouldn't it be better if there was someone who had actual spiritual insight from the Lord advising those who are in charge? especially in a world where there are so many ungodly laws. Because one of the things we see in the Bible is that there are times when kings would do things. And because of the king's actions, it brought judgment upon the land. The Lord spoke to Ezekiel about seeking someone to stand in the gap and finding no one. Seeking someone to stand in the gap to keep back the Lord's hand of judgment. and even the church. If a lot of pastors had prophets and those prophets were truly submitted to the Lord and were in a position to warn of things to come. Not by making prognostications, but by true revelation from the Lord. And sometimes it'd be after the fact. David after he sinned with Bathsheba and against Uriah the Hittite. The Lord sent a prophet, Nathan, to deal with him. When David sinned again, when the devil incited him to take a census of Israel, the Lord sent Gad the seer to deal with the king. And with the prognosticators, it'd be nice if it was like an Elijah to deal with the 450 false prophets of Jezebel like a Micaiah, to deal with the other 400 who advised Ahab on that day that led him to his death. Prophecy is different from prognostication. They look pretty similar. And yes, the Lord frowns upon false prophecy. He also frowns upon prognostication. Because wrong prognostication leads people astray. And as it is written in Revelation 19.10, the testimony of Jesus, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. True prophecy from the Lord points to the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not partisan. It points to the Lord. Because I've also seen things recently where people are saying that if Jesus was on earth today, that he'd be this or he'd be that. The captain of the Lord's, Lord's host, when Joshua had the encounter with him, it was like, are you for us or our enemies? Even though he was there for Joshua and the Israelites, he still said neither. He was on God's side.
So again, back to verse 13. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. I've given many warnings about whether they say they're prophets, a prophetic voice, a messenger of the Lord, or what's their title they use. Or if they don't use one, if they're coming on like social media every month, talking about they have the word of the Lord, and they're doing it every month, like horoscope, is it prophetic or is it monthly prognostication? And a lot of times what they're saying, say there's no tangible evidence of things coming to pass, or sometimes there's no, they don't come to pass, just ear tickling messages. I said the same thing over and over again. Behold, they shall be a stubble, the fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm it, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee, with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants, from thy youth. They shall wander every one of his quarter, none shall save thee. And especially when people are making prognostications, and they've been wrong so many times. Why would he even bother following them? And this next scripture, I may end up using another um, message I need to record. In Isaiah 42, some verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and the new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The Lord's prophecies, they are accurate. And a lot of times, what comes from the Lord? When you look around, it's like there's no supporting evidence. You even think about the life of Joseph. He had those dreams that one day his family would bow down to him. And for years, at least 13 years, nothing in his life. It seemed like he would never see his family again. And then in a moment, it seemed as if he was going to get out of prison. The cupbearer who he, who he told to put in a good word for him forgot about him. And the Bible doesn't say that the night before Pharaoh called for Joseph, that the Lord gave him a dream. In a sense, Joseph was in despondency, in despair. And then the Pharaoh sent for him, changed his life. So for many years, Joseph's life didn't look anything like the promise. But because it was from the Lord, in due time, the Lord brought it to pass. So be careful. There's a thin line between prophecy and prognostication. And it's not to say that if you are prophetic, that you can't think things. But just be careful that you don't get into prognostication yourself. I pray this message has been a blessing to you. Jesus Christ is Lord.